Hello and welcome back to another episode about plants. And today we are going to talk about the plants known as the monkey puzzle trees. They are called Araucaria scientifically, which is a genus of trees that belongs to the Araucaraceae family, the monkey puzzle family, and it's got around twenty species known to science. And in terms of the morphology, the leaves are overlapping scales in shape. That they kind of resembles that of the juniper or cypresses, but they're just a lot bigger and more pronounced. Their leaves also resembles the scales that you can find on lizards or snakes, but the sizes of their leaves differs between species. And in terms of the reproduction habits of these plants, most of them are dioecious, which means they've got a separate male and female reproductive organs. And this is what the male reproductive organs look like. They are often long, slender cones that produces the pollen. And in terms of the fertilized seed cones or the that is produced by the female trees. They are often relatively round, consisting of a cluster of seeds, and there is no scales between those seeds. Where some people say these cones look like pineapples, but what I think they look like is that they look like giant upscaled birch or elder cones, and their seeds are often covered in a thick, hard shell, where the seeds are often relatively large. And just like pine seeds, they've got a wing around them, but the wings on their seeds are relatively small, suggesting that they cannot travel for too long distances. Well, when it comes to the bark, it actually differs between different species in terms of the thickness and the texture. But what they are in common is that they are rough and scaly, and they shed their bark naturally as they grow in size. And in terms of the growth habit, all species are tall, arborescent trees that is capable of reaching a significant height. And just like palm trees, they focuses a lot of growth energy in gaining height and growing taller. But they only uses very little energy in gaining girth and growing horizontally. This is why they stay relatively narrow even when they're at an old age. So, what about the distribution of these plants? Where did they came from? In fact, all species of Araucaria that is alive today, they came from the South Hemisphere, particularly in Australia, New Guinea, New Caledonia, Norfolk Island, and the southern part of South America. Well, the closest living relatives of Araucaria are the genus of Agathis, which are found. In the tropical regions of the West Pacific, and in terms of their adaptations, it actually differs between certain species. This is why they are found in different habitats. For example, the Araucaria ustinii is found in the highlands of New Guinea, and they prefer to grow in relatively cold and moist conditions. They also require a high amount of rainfall to survive. And in terms of the species like Araucaria cunninghamii and and Bedwellii, they are found in the dry forest or dry subtropical forest, to be more specific, of eastern Australia. And they are relatively fire tolerant, and they are also quite drought tolerant too. And the species of Araucaria araucana, which is native to the mountainous regions of southern Chile and Argentina. It is quite cold tolerant, and its growth rate is also relatively slow.、Um, and by far the most common or widely planted species that you can see today is Araucaria heterophylla. The common name is called the Norfolk Island tree, as the name suggests. It came from the Norfolk Island, which is an island off the east coast of Australia, and it is. That's widely cultivated and planted is because、um, they can survive in a variety of soil types. They're also really tolerant of the lack of soil, and its growth rate is relatively fast. It stays narrow, and how they were used is that in cold, temperate regions, they were often planted indoors as in containers as house plants. And in tropical or subtropical regions, 
around the world, they were often planted as shade trees or as trees for windbreaks. And this species is also known for its tolerance to tropical storms or cyclones. The flexible nature of its wood allows them to be really tolerant of wind damages. Another sustainable life uses of them is that certain species produces large edible seeds, and they historically those seeds were widely harvested and eaten by the native people of Australia. And nowadays, the greatest threat that they are facing so far is the increasing amount of wildfires caused by stupid human activities, because certain species of them are not tolerant to fires at all. And also, deforestations also killed a lot of them in their native habitat. And nowadays, certain species of Araucaria are already being listed as threatened or endangered species in their native habitat. And at the end of the day, Araucarias are plants that I quite recommend planting because, first of all, the conservation value of them is relatively high. Um, according to fossil evidences, these Plants are considered to be living fossils because the oldest specimens of this genus is as old as the oldest types of dinosaurs themselves. That means they represent a really ancient lineage of life on Earth. Another reason would be that they don't seem to be particularly invasive to the new ecosystems that they are being introduced to. They don't seem to outcompete the native life there, and they are also great for providing nesting areas for various types of animals, especially large and medium-sized migratory sea birds. So planting them can be a really wise choice if you want to attract the wildlife into the area that you're living in. And certain species of them are also known for being really tough and durable, which has got a variety of uses. Besides that, the lack of spines and poisons in the entire plant also makes them quite safe for both humans and the wildlife. And last but not least, their seeds are not difficult to germinate at all because. In natural conditions, they are not spread or distributed by animals. They are spread and distributed by the wind. So all it takes for them to germinate is enough heat and moisture. And once again, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and you find it interesting.